Rex here. And tonight we're going to be doing a rocking segment on this Sell You Cotton Rayon over here. Some new stuff. Um, got turned on to it by a guy named Steamhead on ECF. He pointed me to this thread started by a dude named Jeremy R on ECF. And that thread is getting some serious traction. So um, caught my attention. The product, I had to get some of the product after hearing such rave reviews around about it. And so far, I'm going to say that um, I like the stuff because it appears to be a very clean media. Unlike, let me give you a little history on me. I've always liked to, um, hold on one second here. I've got, I've got these, i got three mods loaded up with it right now. I'm going to just take a hit off one of these really good stuff. Mm. To me, it's essentially um, a Japanese rolled cotton, maybe uh, a lot cleaner. The appearance of the stuff is like super clean, no particles. To me, the wicking, I don't, I'm not the wickingest freak in the world because I use bottom feeders, so I'm kind of always just squeezing my old bottle here and putting juice up there every few hits. But it, it appears to perform at least, if not better, than the Cogendo stuff, which is, it's extreme. That stuff is just killer. Long, symmetrical fibers all running in the same direction. This stuff is exactly the same type of deal. Again, except totally pure in appearance. So let's take a look at this product in a sense of um, what, what you're going to get out of the box again. It's a long rope of a very pure white looking cotton e substance, but it's actually what's called cellu cotton rayon. As you can see, it's nice long fibers that all run in generally the same direction. Now that's pretty cool for us guys when it comes to wicking. So what I do is I just, um, well, why don't we wait to see what I do when I get the camera turned around the other way. Again, this is an awesome, in my mind, product. I know it's um, kind of right now in its infant stages. I assume it'll blow up. Hopefully um, none of us kind of, our lips fall off or anything from it. But I like it. I like what I've read about it. I like the way it works. To me, it's plug and play. If you're used to using Cogendo, plug and play. If you're used to using CVS Sterile Roll, plug and play, because I find that the density that I've learned from these guys that have been using it for a little bit, the density you're going to want to run on it, to me, is about similar to a CVS Sterile Roll, which was more density than, um, than I was running with Cogendo. Again, but I'm not twisting it dense like a Sterile Roll. Wait, stop. Let's just, let me get the camera turned around. Let's throw it down on a little close-up view. Take one more pull off this thing before I rip the wick out because it is kicking some serious ice with this stuff up in here. Mm. So, I'll see you once I get this whole deal turned around. All right. Now we got this camera deal turned around and we can kind of get under the hood here and get a little close up. Here's that foot or so piece that I boiled. And if you can kind of see how it it looks how it's going down it is um it's it's much easier I find now it looks like it's much easier to work with because it's sort of sandwiched down a little bit can reminds me almost how I work with it of like the Cogendo stuff it's just all running in the same direction which is really good for our uses here as wicks so that piece what I've, I'll do with it now is I snipped off like I snipped me off about an inch of it that I worked with and made like three wicks already. So we're going to use this little piece that I snipped off before. The rest of this stuff I'm putting in a Ziploc and just keeping it, keeping it off to the side. So we're going to run with this little piece here. What you're going to find, it's going to, at least for me, I helps to have like a little wet paper towel around here to um, moisten your fingers when you're working with this because you can see it. Um, it kind of likes to fly away. We're going to be putting it, all the tools I use for this are a pair of sharp scissors to trim it pair of tweezers maybe to pull it through. I've already got the coil built. It's on this um, Rio Grande. It's on that Cyclone. It's just a small micro coil. I want to say this one's right about 1.3, 1.2 ohms if I remember correctly the last time I checked it. It's about a .055 inch ID. We're just going to take that wick and slip it right through the tube there. Barrel it. And it's going to kick some serious butt like I said. So um here we go so this is a little piece I'm just going to um, remember if anyone that's used CVS sterile rolled we used to twist it up dense if anyone's used Cogendo you kinda kept it you kept the fiber straight that's how we're rolling this Cogendo but you're gonna use about the density you use with CVS sterile rolled so it's gonna pull me off a piece and about like that 
I'm going to get my little wet paper towel and what we're going to do is try and keep the integrity of the fibers going in one direction. You don't want to mess with the fibers. So I'm just going to take this tip, I'm going to twist up a tip such that I could thread it into my coil. The rest of it you want to leave it alone. Okay, you just don't, you want, that's, this part over here is the part we're going to get in the coil. This tip is just to get it in. I think once I twist a tip on it, it seems to hold that tip form. I find it easier to slide into the coil once I get it, wrestle those little fibers out. So I just twist them in a nice long tip. You don't have to be reservatious, if that's a word with this stuff. I mean, you got 500 feet. You can have wick parties with you and your buddies for the next 20 years, and you're not going to worry about running out of stuff. So just don't, you don't have to be all stingy with it. Make you a nice tip and put it in your coil. Now, here, here we go. You're going to want a little density. This may, you see this? This is a little dense. I'm pulling it, and you see my mod trucking with me here? That, that's too dense right there, and it's going to deform a coil. So what we're going to do in that case, I'm glad that happened. We're going to pull it out, and we're just going to separate a little bit of this wick from there because you don't want it that dense. We want it to be dense. We want it to be in full contact with the coil, but we don't want it so dense. And just take a little off. That's it. Retwist it. Retwist it. Leave the rest of that stuff fluffy. Don't don't be twisting it up. Leave those fibers straight. Make you a new point. Trim off the little very tip of it. Maybe I didn't even trim off enough because you want to have enough. Um, you want it to be stiff enough to go through your coil. That sometimes those littlest points won't do it. And just maybe wet it a little bit again and stick it back through there. Grab it. Oh yeah. Oh, let's go grab the tip, the very tip, and pull it in again. Um, here we go. Now, my mod might move a little bit here, but I think right now I've achieved the perfect density of it because you can see now that I've got it in, my mod's not going anywhere. See that? That's about it. And again, just if it doesn't feel right, it probably isn't. If it's way too thin, you're not good. Now again, I traditionally ran very short tails because when I feed this mod, I just push this little thing here, I'll show you in a minute, juice comes up. So I don't need a lot of tails because I want fresh juice all the time. I want the juice to always be fresh. But I do run them a tiny little bit longer with this. So I'm just going to take this and cut it just a little bit wider than the edge of the bowl. Same on this side. Just going to trim that off and just leave the deal alone. Just push it over to the side so I can put the cap on. Now again, when I feed, check this out, how this works. Let me see if I can get a nice tight focus on that. The juice is going to come up into the mod and it's going to grab those fibers and you see that they're just going to saturate. Now, if that was cotton, a good sterile rolled cotton wick, no, not necessary. More of a cogen. No, sterile took a little longer to, to soak it up. You see how quick that absorbed the liquid, which is right on par with a good cotton. But what I've also learned from the guys that have been running this stuff is you want to let it just saturate just for a little bit longer than you might with cotton. Now, if that was cotton right now, it'd be game on. Remember, this might, the initial break in of it might take just a little tiny bit longer. But it's a sacrifice I'm willing to make for potentially a much cleaner product with no particulate in it. Probably no residual pesticides. Probably not much of anything. So as long as you don't burn the fiber itself by dry hitting it, um, you should be, in, I'm guessing, in really good shape. Now, I'm by no means a doctor. I can't proclaim or anything. I'm not any, anything but a vapor looking for the cleanest, simplest, safest vape. That said, from what I can see here, it looks pretty good. But don't take my word for anything. If you could, if you could have someone test this, I would be all game to hear what they have to say about it. So far, people that have looked at it have given some um, some good reports. So there you go. That's pretty much the deal there. And um, it, again, the vape. There's no if you if you wick it right, you should have zero flavor off it. You might. I find that because I wet my fingers with this paper towel, that usually I get like it would taste like a little bit of a wet hit every now and then when I first put it in. But um, it goes away after the first hit, just a wet sort of um, materially taste just for a second. And that's it. So I just wet it down, and it's good to go. It's ready to rock. So at this point right now, I'm going to consider this to be highly vapable. So why don't we um, crank a vape off it real quick? 
I did I did finally figure out the battery needed to be changed. This it wasn't necessarily needed to be changed. I just had it off center. I set it down and mm, it's this is a kick ass mod. All my mods pretty much kick ass. All my Addies kick ass. All my coils kick ass. There's no reason my wick should not kick as much ass. That's why I really like this product. Nothing bad to say about cotton, but again, I'm still looking for if I can get something that I believe is a cleaner product that might have less stuff on it or potentially stuff on it, that's me. You can vape whatever you want. Chef don't judge. I can care less, but I want some clean stuff in my deal, and that's why I'm rolling this product right here. Um, no, zero taste whatsoever of any any wicking media. All I taste is my unflavored Nick Bass. Um, 90%, 95% VG, about 6 milligrams of unflavored Nick Bass. That's all I vape. Mm. This coil will look like this two weeks from now. Here's coils that I whipped up this morning. And they look, they'll look, they'll continue to look exactly like this. I mean, they don't. This stuff does not. Oh, yeah, I just have to do a little contact service on my mod. I've been lazy. That um, coil and that juice does not gunk your coils. I don't burn wicks. It's just pretty amazing stuff. So there's that one I wicked up this morning. This is pretty much the identical Addy on a different mod. You'll see that it looks pretty, it's pretty clean stuff too. And um, probably flooded that one out a little bit. You can see it's just bathing in juice. Um, yeah, let's take a look at that. That's a good thing to look at. Too much juice around your coil if you've flooded it and just let it sit. Hey, your your vape, you can see the results of having a coil with too much juice. I try and tell that to people that drip and they're looking for, oh, I want more juice storage. Juice storage sucks. You think you're doing yourself a favor by not dripping. That's why I use bottom feeders because you can feed as often as you want. Too much juice, look what it does to that coil. It cools it off. It leaves, it leaves very little vapor. What I've got to do with this is just loosen this bottle. That juice will drain. It probably got a minor airlock or maybe some of that wick. I probably used a lot of wick and it's covering the drain hole. It looks more like it. As you can see here, yeah, it's just that little bit of wick got into my drain hole there and it didn't like that too much. But as, if we can get most of this liquid out of here, you'll see how that vape just starts to kick ass once it starts to get clear. So keep that in mind when you're wicking and you're going for these massive tails and you're trying to hold all this juice in your Addy. Too much juice is a bad thing. Minimal wick, juice often, you'll get your freshest flavor, your best vapor, and it's game on. If you, you're really lazy, I, I would highly even more suggest you get a bottom feeder because... You are just feeding whenever you want. You don't have to pull off your cap and drip. You feed on demand. Fresh clothes and juice on demand. So there we go. Super X, hoping you're going to enjoy your Cellutex rolled, or Cellutex, um, cell, Cellucotton is what it's called? Sorry, Cellucotton Rayon. And I got mine at Sally Beauty Supply. It was like 12 bucks for that huge box. Okay, I'm throwing props to um, Steamhead and Jeremy R for... Uh, kind of rolling in this direction and rocking and rolling and leading the way. I'll see ya.